good morning everyone today let us discuss some of the important questions from art and culture from the ancient india so i have i have arranged the questions in themes okay and in chronological order okay so let us follow this and don't follow your question paper just go by the question and let us discuss the answer so the first question is about dolavira okay so dolavira is the latest addition to the world heritage sites okay so we have totally how many world heritage sites 40 and you know they are classified under three types what are they cultural, cultural natural and mixed sites okay so dolavira is the late, uh, late recent most addition okay so let us see the important features of uh, dolavira so for any indus valley site okay, you have, um, uh, one of the important questions can be what are the major archaeological discoveries from that area okay so let us see the first option dolavira shows signs of all the three phases of indus valley civilization okay this is a correct statement next remains of copper smelting can be found in dolavira this is also correct statement like in mohenjodaro mortal remains of humans have been discovered here now this is incorrect okay so because mohenjodaro what do you mean by mohenjodaro it is a mound of the dead okay so in at mohenjodaro because of some unforeseen circumstances we have they have mono mound of the dead skeletons have been found okay but not even a single mortal remain of humans and skeletons has been discovered in dolavira okay so and another important uh, characteristic of dolavira is it is one of the largest sites one of the largest what is the first largest site of indus valley civilization rakigari yes okay uh, before you know rakigari is a very recent discovery you know about the size Okay, it's been last in 2015 or 16. You know, it has been declared as the largest. But previous, before to Rakigari, Mohenjo-daro is considered as the largest Indus Valley civilization site. Okay, so uh, likewise, Dolavira is the fifth largest Indus Valley site. Okay, the first is Rakigari. Okay, next is Mohenjo-daro, Harappa, and Ganwariwala. Okay, so Ganwariwala is in Pakistan. Rakigari is in Haryana. India. Okay, yes, Mohenjo-daro. Punj uh, yeah, Pakistan. Harappa is also in Pakistan. Okay. Likewise, what is the first Indus Valley site to be discovered? Harappa. Okay. Nineteen hundred and some twenties. Okay. Dayaram Sahani. Okay. These all you must remember. So this also this need you need not remember, but since it is in news, it is better to remember. Okay. Dolavira was discovered in nineteen sixty eight by J P Joshi. Okay. so in a, another important feature of dolavira is that in this city all the uh, remains of all the stages of harappa civilization can be found okay like so harappa civilization it uh, it can be segregated into three phases okay early phase mature phase and late harappan phase okay so all the three phases that means the rise of the civilization mature period and the decline of the harappa civilization can be found in this dolavira site okay so it also declined in such a dramatic way that means in because in, in this region human remains are not found that means that it can be uh, inferred that this region has been abandoned by the people okay if some natural calamity something has happened okay then some mortal remains could have been found here okay but since no mortal remains can, is found here it can be inferred that this region saw the prosperity and maybe because of some reasons maybe because of climate change or you know changing monsoon conditions decline in trade because of these reasons the city has fallen and the people have slowly abandoned this region and they moved to some other place okay so uh, regarding indus valley sites you have to remember which site is located on which river that is how you should relate okay like harappa is located on river ravi okay and mohenjodaro is on indus okay chanhudara is on indus okay so likewise all the important uh, indus valley sites okay you have to remember on which adjacent to which river these sites are located okay but dolavara is not located on any river but it is located on an island okay that island you know uh, it was initially an island in the part of run of kutch but after after a few thousand years you know that sea has receded and that whole area became run of kutch present okay again this this city is the flourished for nearly 1500 years presenting a long continuous habitation okay that's what i told it uh, saw the rise mature phase and decline of the harappan civilization okay yeah another important interesting feature of dolavira is 
the archaeological evidence okay likewise uh, you know that you know uh, in mohanjadaro what has been found the bearded man okay some priest some kind of priest and you know that bronze dancing lady so likewise in dolivera interesting feature is that here andus valley script is found here okay so the script is in the so this one so it is in the form of a sign board okay like the advertisements which we see billboard advertisements which we see on the roads okay so this script is in the kind of a sign board maybe it can be referred as you know entrance to the city as we are entering the city maybe the sign is showing some script but since this script is not displayed we don't know what it is but you know it has some 10 uh, letters which are different to something like as like a sign board okay that is the interesting feature and other things which can be found is you know this copper smelting okay so the metallurgy is known to these systems uh, again uh, interesting feature of dolivera is the water harvesting system okay dolivera around the city several dams and reservoirs okay and these are interconnected to each other okay so the water level at one dam if it increases you know there is another dam to store the water from this excess uh, water of another dam okay so interconnected series of dams reservoirs and you know rainwater harvesting pits all these can be found in dolivera next again there is a manufacturing hub of shell semi precious metals and you know this uh, sign board and uh, no mortal remains of humans has been found in dolivera okay so these first two are correct statements third statement is wrong so likewise these are some of the important archaeological discoveries at various indus valley sites so this you can go through later detailedly so like in harappa you know uh, cemetery r37 okay they may ask this question okay where is this cemetery r37 found okay it is in harappa it has been asked previously in previous in some other state government exams likewise phallus worship mother goddess has been found in harappa in mohanjadaro we can see Pashupati Nada seal, okay, and the bronze dancing girl, and this tea-tied Buddha, uh, sorry, uh, pre bearded priest, okay, that image which you find in NCRT. Next in Surkotada, horse bone is found, okay. So it is there is no archaeological evidence for uh, you know uh, um, availability of horses in Andas Valley civilization, but some bone has been found, okay, which can be inferred as a horse. Next in Kalibangan, fire altar is found, and evidence of pluffing. Okay, so in the Kalibangan, a ground is found where the land is furrowed. Okay, so there is evidence of pluffing which can be found in Kalibangan, and camel bone is found in Kalibangan. And in Lothal, it is a port town. Okay, so it used to trade with other Melu, uh, uh, surrounding regions, Mesopotamia and all. Next again, graveyard, ivory, white balance, copper, etc. And in Chanhudaro, Chanhudaro is an exquisite location for. craft making okay different kinds of beads bangles precious semi precious metal stones etc okay they have been made in this region next in daimabad bronze buffalo and in amri okay site uh, the remains of rhinoceros these are found okay so these are some of the important archaeological discoveries among the famous indus valley sites okay let us see the next question this is regarding indian schools of thought okay so <coughs> you know we have different uh, six schools of philosophy so again this broad school of philosophy they can be categorized into two categories astika and nastika okay astika means orthodox and nastika means heterodox what is the major difference between these two belief in belief in yeah they are brahmanical and non brahmanical brahmanical means majorly they have high belief in vedas okay so astika sects or orthodox sects okay these are they uh, give authority to vedas okay whatever is written in the vedas okay they they form the basis for these philosophical texts whereas these buddhism jainism and charvaka okay they have rejected the authority of vedas okay hence they are heterodox okay so samkhya again you should know who which uh, saint gave which kind of philosophy samkhya was given by who kapila yoga patanjali nyaya bhai gautama vaisheshika bhai kannada okay meemamsa jaimini and vedanta badrayana so this is again important maybe they may not ask in upsc but again this is uh, important for all all other kind of uh, level 2 exams okay so which uh, saint or which you know who propounded which kind of philosophy 
सो वॉट इज साम क्या वॉट पुरुष एंड प्रकृति ओके सो सांख्य सेज दैट देर इज मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड एंड देर इज स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड ओके सो वेन अवर ओनली वेन दिस मेटीरियल एंड स्पिरिचुअल दे कम टूगेदर ओके द क्रिएशन बिगिन्स ओके सो मेटीरियल इज प्रकृति नेचर स्पिरिचुअल इज पुरुष दट इज मीन द सोल ओके नेक्स्ट योगा योगा इज गिवन बै पतंजलि ओके इट इज अबउट इंटिग्रेटिंग बॉडी मैंड एंड हार्ट ओके हाउ डू नो so it is not just physical exercise but it is also a spiritual practice okay so yoga is not just doing asanas but with every asana it has uh, associated spiritual part also okay next nyaya nyaya is given by gautama so nyaya is kind of philosophy which says that knowledge can be acquired through different kinds of process okay there is pratyaksha parmana pratyaksha means okay all the things which we see they can be considered as correct and true okay next we have anumana param anumana means inference okay if there is smoke then there should be fire somewhere okay next is shabda shabda means you know like the word which is given by an expert in any subject okay if a scientist says something then it must be correct because he is a expert in that field okay so the real knowledge can be arrived through different kind of mode so that philosophy is given in nyaya and vaisheshika vaisheshika is about so vaisheshika philosophy can be uh, told as the beginning of physics at least in indian subcontinent okay so it tells about metaphysical and physical world okay how the physical world came into existence so it says that okay did not get, uh, dwell deep into atoms but it first gave told about anus and paramanus okay so but again according to this philosophy everything is made of five elements what are the five elements water, water fire earth you know space and air etc next uh, mimamsa and vedanta so these both uh, they can be uh, put under mimamsa category purva mimamsa and uttara mimamsa so again mimamsa it, it dwells about you know all the uh, brahmanas etc okay whereas vedanta vedanta is the ending part of vedas which are nothing but the whole essence of vedas are contained in the upanishads okay so again the commentary on upanishads is given in vedanta okay so badrayana was the first proponent of this but later on in bhakti movement we have shankara acharya the you know then we have uh, different ramanuja acharya different philosophers okay who further interpreted this vedanta okay and they gave different philosophies you know like dvaita advaita philosophy etc okay next we have buddhism jainism and charvaka okay you already know the basics about buddhism and jainism charvaka philosophy what is charvaka philosophy materialism okay so in indian context charvaka philosophy is the uh, equivalent to hedonistic philosophy okay so charvaka philosophy outrightly says that there is no god okay we do not believe in god we believe only things that we see okay so there is no after life so you need, you need not do all the kind of severe penances you know to achieve to achieve something in the after life okay because the after life is something which we do not see and experience okay so live your life lavishly borrow money okay and eat well so this is the philosophy given by charvaka philosophy so these are heterodox philosophy okay or nastika philosophies now regarding vaisheshika it believes in the physicality of universe this is correct statement it argues everything in the universe is made of five elements okay these five elements together make up different compounds and atoms okay next it advocates scientific thinking and do not believe in the karma doctrine this is false because even though it is advocating scientific thinking okay it still says that okay everything you know everything is you know going as per the wishes of god and it also believes in the karma doctrine so this is a false statement okay let us see the next question okay this is about the major events in the life of buddha okay so here it is given uh, see the consider the following terms okay mahabhi nishkramana means this is correct because it it represents the departure of buddha from his house okay so buddha when he you know he when he went outside his house and he saw three different incidents okay that changed his mind and he decided to leave his house the premises of his house he went on a horse okay what is the name of his horse kantaka, kantaka okay so next is dharma chakra parivartana this is buddha's enlightenment this is false statement because dharma chakra parivartana means the first sermon okay so from the first sermon of the buddha okay the wheel of dharma okay the wheel of law it started to rotate okay so it is called as dharma chakra parivartana 
Next is Sambodhi. Okay, so Sambodhi does not have anything to do with this Buddha's life or events. Okay, this is again false. Mahaparanirvana. This is Buddha's death. Okay, so what does Buddha's enlightenment mean? There is a the word for Buddha's enlightenment is Nirvana. Okay, so these are the five major events in Buddha, life of Buddha, and these are the associated symbols. So in Buddhist architecture stupas, we find many references to the life of Buddha. Okay, so they cannot depict the life of Buddha in a narrative format, but so they have created some motifs. So if they wherever you can find lotus, bull, or elephant, so it represents the event of birth of Buddha. Okay, so next Mahabhinishkamana means the departure of Buddha from his home. So this is signified with the help of horse or empty throne. Okay, so Buddha has vacated his throne and he left the house. Next Nirvana means Buddha's enlightenment. This is depicted by Bodhi tree. Whereas Dharma Chakra Parivartana means the Buddha's first sermon. Okay, so it is represented by wheel. Uh, uh, Ashoka Chakra is there, no? Like a wheel, lion, or a deer. Okay, because Buddha gave his first sermon in a deer park. Okay, in Sarnath deer park, he gave his first sermon. Next, Mahaparinirvana means okay, the ultimate death of Buddha. Okay, so Buddha's death, and it is represented by a stupa. So see this next question. So this whole answer you can just uh, write by this word only compassion in Mahayana doctrine. Okay. So this question is about bodhisattvas. So who are bodhisattvas? So this so in Buddhism the main uh, the main ultimate aim is to attain nirvana. Okay. So uh, there are four noble truths. So to get rid of all these four noble truths and to attain nirvana. But these bodhisattvas are those people. Who are helping others to attain nirvana by delaying their own nirvana? Okay, so these bodhisattvas they are not in a hurry to attain nirvana. Okay, so the main aim of these bodhisattvas is to help other people, common people, for the spread of Buddhism. Okay, so these people they are delaying their own enlightenment for the sake of others. So these are called as bodhisattvas. Okay, so we have different bodhisattvas. So among them, prominent bodhisattvas are Padmapani. Vajrapani, okay, and we have Manjushri. So there are different bodhisattvas. So each bodhisattva represents one uh, one significant uh, feature, okay. So likewise, the bodhisattva of compassion. So the bodhisattva of compassion is our Padmapani, okay, and Padmapani is also called as Avalokiteshvara, okay. So in fact, he is considered as Dalai Lama, okay. So uh, we have Dalai Lama in Tibet. So Dalai Lama is considered as the reincarnation of Padmapani or Avalokiteshvara. So these, likewise, these are some other important bodhisattvas. So Padmapani is considered as the manifestation of Buddha's compassion, whereas Vajrapani is Buddha's power, okay. And Manjushri, we have he is manifestation of Buddha's wisdom, okay. So next we have Samanta Bhadra. Samanta Bhadra is associated with meditation. So in Buddhist philosophy again, Mahayana Buddhism, we have Trinity, Buddhist Trinity. Okay. So this Samanta Bhadra, Manjushri, and Sakyamuni. Who is Sakyamuni? Sakyamuni means Sakyamuni means the original Buddha, uh, Gautam Buddha. Okay. Sakya clan because Gautam Buddha was born in a Sakya clan. Okay. So Sakyamuni means the original Buddha. And this Samanta Bhadra and Manjushri, they are considered as the Buddhist Trinity. Okay. Next, Maitreya is future Buddha. So these questions have been asked in UPSC. So we have to go a step beyond which they made, which this area they have not covered. Okay. So this again, Tathagatas, we have five Dhyani Buddhas. Okay, so like in Hindu philosophy, we have Ashta Dikpalakas, right? For eight directions, eight cardinal directions, we have eight uh, guardians. Okay, so likewise, in for four directions and for the center direction, okay, there are five Dhyani Buddhas. Okay, so these are Amoga Siddhi, Amitabha, okay, uh, Akshobhya, Ratna Sambhava, and Vairochana. Okay, so these are called as five Dhyani Buddhas or Tathagatas. Okay. Next, see the next question regarding Buddhist literature. So we have to find the correct statement here. So Vinay Pitaka is concerned with the sermons and teachings of Buddha. This is false statement. Let us see third statement. Jataka tales are available in Pali literature only. This is also false. 
नेक्स्ट जातक स्टोरी डील विथ पास्ट इनकर्नेशन ऑफ बुद्धा इन एनिमल फॉर्म ओनली ओके दिस इज आलसो फॉल्स ओके सो व्हाट इज द करेक्ट हाउ कैन वी करेक्ट दिस स्टेटमेंट्स विनय पीटिका डील्स विथ रूल्स ओके सो इट इज इन द नेम इट सेल्फ विनय मींस दे हैव टू बी ओबीडियंट सो दिस विनय पीटिका डील्स विथ रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस ऑफ मॉन्क्स ओके हाउ दे हैव टू बिहेव इन चैत्यास एंड यू नो विहारास दैट इज गिवन इन विनय पीटिका ओके व्हाट आर द अदर पीटिकास सुतपीटिका एंड abhidhamma petika they are called as tripitaka okay and you know they have been compiled under different buddhist councils okay so do you know this buddhist councils where they have been held where is the first buddhist council rajagriha okay so first buddhist council rajagriha and where is it who, who is the under which king ajata shatru ओके सेकंड बुद्धिस्ट कौनसिल वैशाली ओके हु इज द किंग कालाशोक थर्ड वन राजगृह वैशाली पाटलिपुत्र किंग अशोक नेक्स्ट फोर्थ बुद्धिस्ट कौनसिल इन कश्मीर नो हु इज द किंग कनिष्का ओके so in which buddhist council this uh, tripitakas have been compiled first buddhist council in first buddhist council vinapitaka and suttapitaka in first buddhist council vinapitaka and suttapitaka have been compiled whereas in third buddhist council abhidhamma pitaka was compiled okay so again vinapitaka was compiled by the disciple of buddha called as upali and sutapitaka was compiled by ananda okay and abhidhamma pitaka was compiled by mogaliputta tissa okay so these tripitakas they have been compiled in which language pali language okay because buddha he rejected this brahmanism uh, this you know Uh, uh, orthodoxy of brahmans and you know the sanskrit language so buddha started to teach his give his uh, message in a local language in pali and prakrit okay so he preferred giving importance to local languages in the language which people can understand okay so during that time the language spoken is pali and prakrit okay so all these uh, tripitakas they have been compiled in pali language only okay during later periods uh, sanskrit buddhist literature came into existence okay now jataka stories are part of suttapitaka okay so in suttapitaka okay again these tripitakas they have been divided into different books they are called as nikaya okay so in uh, in uh, vinay pitaka there are many different books they are called as nikayas okay so again th these have different different names so jataka stories are part of suttapitaka jataka tales are available in pali literature only okay so again this is false because see jataka there are many different uh, numerous versions of jataka stories so what are these jataka stories again this uh, so according to again uh, mahayanism uh, jataka so buddha before giving you know uh, before taking the life as you know gautam buddha he has gone through different uh, reincarnations okay so before coming uh, to known as gautam buddha the buddha had gone through 550 different forms of incarnations and reincarnations okay so he was born and brought up as different kinds of animals birds and human beings okay so all these stories of buddha's previous lives they are called as jataka stories okay so this jataka stories deals with not just animal incarnation of buddha but also human incarnations of buddha okay so th likewise there are numerous versions of jataka stories okay so some jataka stories they were in pali language and somewhere in sanskrit also okay so this is incorrect statement so jataka stories deal with past incarnations of buddha in uh, not just animal form but also human form also okay so this is with reference to buddhist literature i have discussed this already next uh, some other uh, we also have buddhist literature available in not just pali but also in sanskrit okay so these are some of the examples you know right milinda panha who what is the what is milinda panha about discussion between minander and nagasena monk okay so and next next we have deepavamsa and mahavamsa these are books from ceylon sri lanka okay so mahavamsa deals about 
द लीनियर जी ओके विच किंग केम इन टू एक्सिस्टेंस हू वॉज द फर्स्ट किंग आफ्टर अशोक हू केम अबाउट द लीनोलॉजी इन साउथ एशिया महावंश डील्स अबाउट द होल द क्रोनोलॉजी वेर एस दीपवंश इट इज अबाउट हाउ द मेसेज ऑफ बुद्ध रीच टू श्रीलंका सो इन दीपवंश दोके हाउ द बुद्ध केम टू श्रीलंका हू ब्रॉट इट एंड वेर दस्टाब्लिश टू पर्सो आल दिस इज डेल्ट इन दीपवंश ओके नेक्स्ट वी हाव सम अदर बुक्स लाइक बुद्ध चरित हू रोट बुद्ध चरित अश्वघोष नेक्स्ट लाइक नेक्स्ट विशुद्धि मार्ग हू रोट दिस बुद्धघोष ओके नेक्स्ट अमर कोश इज रिटन बै अमर सिंह सो नेक्स्ट अभिधर्म कोश सो अभिधर्म कोश इज ए डिशनरी आफ् बुद्धिस्ट टेक्नोलॉजी ओके सो नेक्स्ट वी हाव ललित विस्तार एक्सेट्रा सो दीज आर सम ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट बुद्धिस्ट लिटरेचर ओके सो वेन एवर यू हाव टाइम जस्ट दीज टाइम्स गो थ्रू दीज टाइम्स एंड मेक ए नोट ऑफ हू इज द ऑदर ऑफ दीज कैंड ऑफ बुक्स ओके सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज रिगार्डिंग जैन लिटरेचर विच आर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग जैन लिटरेचर आर इनकरेक्ट पंपा पोन्ना एंड रन्ना वेर फेमस कनड रईटर्स रिलेटेड टू जैनिज दिस इज ट्रू सो बुद्धिस्ट लिटरेचर इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू पाली एंड सांस्क्रिट ओनली वेर एस जैन लिटरेचर इज यू नो वेरी डईवर्स ओके सो जैन लिटरेचर कैन बी फौंड इन डिफरेंट रीजन लोकल वर्षन ओके इन तमिल इन कन्ड ओके इन गुजराती मराठी अर्धमगधि प्राकृति सो इन डिफरेंट लांग्वेजेस जैन लिटरेचर कैन बी फौंड The most important Jain texts are Angas, Upangas, and Agamas, etc. Okay, and they are written in Prakrit language. One of the epics in Tamil, Shiva ke Chinta Mani, is a Jain text. Okay, in fact, many other uh, epics in Tamil like Sila Padigaram, okay, and Mani Mekalai. Okay, so these all import, uh, important texts are Jain texts only because they have been written by Jain merchants, you know, and uh, stories involve the you know roles of Jain merchants and Jainist monks, etc. Okay. Swetambara said, "Do not accept the authority of Jaina Agamas." Okay, this is false statement because Digambara said, "Do not accept the authority of Jaina Agamas." Because according to Digambaras, all the Jaina Agamas etc. they have been compiled by Swetambaras. Okay, so Swetambaras they have compiled and recompiled. They have translated some of the oldest literature into Jaina Agamas. But Digambaras they say that, "Okay, you have corrupted this Jaina Agamas. We do not trust your." literature okay so digambaras they do not follow jaina agamas <laughs> next question regarding indian ancient indian literature see these uh, names of the novels or books okay first one is malavika agnimitra okay this was written by kalidasa okay so what is the story about love story between ओके सो द नेम इज इन द नेम ऑफ द नावल इट सेल्फ अग्निमित्र सो अग्निमित्र इज द सन ऑफ पुष्यमित्र सुंगा ओके सो इट इज द लव स्टोरी ऑफ मैडन मालविका एंड पुष्यमित्र सुंगा सन हू इज अग्निमित्र ओके नेक्स्ट वन इज मुद्र राक्षस रिटर्न बै विशाख दत्त मुद्र राक्षस अबउट इट इज अ पोलिटिकल ड्रामा ओके अबउट द रईज ऑफ चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य नैक्स्ट रत्नावली रिटर्न बै हर्ष ओके हर्ष रोड थ्री डिफरेंट प्लेस ओके रत्नावली इंका नागानंद प्रियदर्शिक एक्सेट्रा ही रोट सो रत्नावली अगेन इट इज अ लव स्टोरी बिटवीन किंग उडायन एंड द डॉटर ऑफ सीलॉन किंग ओके नेक्स्ट शिलपाधिकारम रिटर्न बाय इलंगा अडिगल ओके अगेन इट इज ए लव स्टोरी बट ए सैड लव स्टोरी बिटवीन कन्नागी एंड हर हस्ब कावल ओके सो इन दिटी ऑफ मदुरे इट इस अ वेरी ग्रेट स्टोरी इन दिटी ऑफ मदुरे नो कन्नागि एंड कावल एंड देवर हस्ब एंड वाइफ ओके बट लेटर कावल एंड ही गॉट अट्राक्टेड टू सम अदर डांसिंग लेडी अगेन सो अगेन ही गॉट किल्ड सो अगेन कन्नागि गोस् टू द किंग स्कोट फॉर् जस्टिस इट इस अ ग्रेट स्टोरी एपिक स्टोरी नैक्स्ट अबउट अशोक इंस्क्रिपन ओके सो अशोक he left behind numerous inscriptions to make our exam even more difficult so whenever they ask from which rock edict what has been discovered it is very difficult to put because you know there are more than 40 inscriptions okay there are major pillar edicts minor pillar edicts you know major rock edicts minor rock edicts okay at every each edict you know there has been something has been said about something 
okay so buddha came to nepal so uh, ashoka went to nepal he did something you know some uh, he gave some uh, tax incentives for some people so there are many things okay it is difficult to remember all of these things okay so again another important feature of mauryan art architecture is you know about the buddha uh, ashokan pillar inscriptions and then capitals so you know about the difference between ashokan pillars and iranian pillars right okay so in art and culture ashokan so like the king ashoka wherever he went some if some important significant event took place he erected a pillar there okay so on the top of the pillar so on this top of the pillar he erected some capital okay that means some kind of symbol of some animal okay so each of this animal represents something okay according to mahayana buddhism so likewise so out of the numerous pillar inscriptions in india only seven in, seven pillar inscriptions are present in india which is having their uh, animal capital okay so likewise there are only seven capitals in india with their animals uh, present on them okay so you have to arrange this in which location which kind of animal figure has been found okay so laura nandagar laura nandagar here single lion next rampurva bull capital okay so in Ram, rampurva bull capital has been found okay that means on the top of this pillar the you know the <coughs> symbol of a bull has been found here next sankissa elephant okay and in sanchi we have four lion okay so the present national emblem of india four lion okay so this emblem has been found in two different locations sanchi and sarnath okay so sanchi lion capital is uh, somewhat uh, uh, dilapidated okay it has been broken down okay but sarnath was in intact okay so indian government has adopted sarnath you uh, know capital as national emblem it is not sanchi capital but in sanchi also that four lion emblem has been found okay so likewise so these are the different ashokan capitals seven uh, animal capitals okay these are the different locations in which they are found okay so this is the bull capital rampura bull capital okay presently this is located at ekada andi no this is located in rashtrapati bhavan rashtrapati bhavan okay that uh, it has been taken and located in rashtrapati bhavan okay this is the elephant sankesa elephant capital okay again favorite question in which inscriptions the name of ashoka can be found okay so in all of these four inscriptions uh, minor rock edicts okay the name of ashoka can be found okay they are kanganahalli gujjara maski and netturu okay so see uh, before so among all these four maski was earliest discovered so before the discovery of maski rock edict okay among in different parts of the country ashokan inscriptions are found but they cannot be ascribed to a specific king because in all these inscriptions devanam pedasi is just written okay so devanam what is the meaning of devanam pedasi the one who is beloved by the god that's it so just the title is written but the name of the king is not mentioned anywhere okay but in maski edict devanam pia ashoka was written okay so after you know discovering this maski edict so devanam pia was associated with the king ashoka so from then onwards okay then it has been understood that okay there are different uh, rock edicts in india which is having the name devanam pia okay so all these were then referred to ashokan king okay so likewise so in maski devanam pia ashoka was written whereas in gujjara okay devanam pia pedasi ashoka raja okay he himself mentions as a king ashoka raja is written whereas in kanganahalli in karnataka ranyo ashoko is written and so in this region the sculpture of ashoka is found along with the title so here the sculpture is present and below this sculpture ranyo ashoka was also written so it can kind of like a self portrait okay and in nettur again in karnataka you know the name ashoka is written okay so in these four inscriptions the name of ashoka can be found next about allahabad pillar inscription allahabad pillar inscription has engravings of which of the following rulers okay so again this is a very interesting uh, <laughs> inscription of ashoka okay Be because previously this allahabad pillar inscription it was erected by ashoka in kosambi okay but later 
So uh, on this inscription, on this very same inscription, Samudra Gupta, okay, of Gupta Kingdom, Samudra Gupta has engraved his own engravings on the same pillar, okay. Again during Mughal age, okay, Jahangir, Jahangir brought this same pillar to Allahabad, okay. Again he also engraved his engravings on the same pillar, okay. So within the same pillar, three different uh, kingdoms can be found, okay, uh, and, uh, and you know inscriptions, okay. So this is the interesting feature of Allahabad pillar inscription. So this is Allahabad pillar inscription. If you can see here, okay, here the inscriptions of Ashoka are written. Again on the same inscription, uh, you know the engravings of Samudra Gupta is written. Okay, again after some time, again uh, you know in, during Mughal age Jahangir, he uh, discarded some of this uh, some of the engravings and he brought that Persian influence, Arabic uh, literature, etc. And he wrote his own engravings on that literature. Okay, so this is with regarding to Allahabad inscription. So in this inscription we find the dynasties of Ashoka, Samudra Gupta and Jahangir. Okay. Next regarding other pillar inscriptions in India. Okay, these are some of the important pillar inscriptions. This is the Mehroli iron pillar inscription. Okay, what is the interesting feature of Mehroli iron pillar inscription? It is non-rusting iron. Okay. So it has been erected during the period of Guptas, but still it is non-rusting. Okay, still it has not been, you know, the condition has not been deteriorated. Still it has not rusted. Okay, so presently it is uh, located at Delhi. Okay, just beside Kutub Minar, in that Kutub Minar temple complex. Okay, this iron pillar is located. Okay, so this pillar was associated to Gupta period. Again, on this pillar, the engravings of Chandragupta II can be found. Okay, so this pillar says that. Chandragupta has won over Vanga kingdom. Okay. So again, <laughs> this pillar after some time in 11th century AD, this pillar has been brought down to Delhi okay, from its original location. The original location is not known, okay, but it is associated with the Chandragupta period. So it was brought to Delhi. But again, after some time, uh, again uh, during the period of uh, you know Iltutmish, you know when this Kutubuddin, uh, sorry, this uh, Kutubbina temple was being constructed, this was erected inside that Mehroli temple complex. Okay. Next, Besnagar pillar inscription. Okay, what is this Besnagar pillar inscription about? Is it, it is also called as Heliodorus pillar. Okay, Besnagar pillar is also called as Heliodorus pillar. So who is Heliodorus? Ambassador. So Heliodorus is a Greek ambassador of the who is the king of that Greece during that time? Antiochus. Okay. So Antiochus was the Greek emperor, and Heliodorus is the ambassador of the great Greece emperor. Okay. So when he Heliodorus visited India, he was fascinated by the Vaishnava culture. Okay. So he declared himself as a Vaishnava and the worshipper of Vasudeva. Okay. And during the period, this happened during the period of the king during that period was Bangabhadra. Okay. So, with the help of Bangabhadra, he erected a pillar in Vidisha in Madhya Pradesh. Okay. So, on that pillar, he describes himself as the worshipper of Vasudeva or Krishna. Okay. So, it is not associated with Kanishka, but it is associated with Heliodorus pillar. Okay. Next, I hole inscription mentions the defeat of Harshavadana by. Full case two. Okay, this is correct. Okay. So this is the Mahroli iron pillar. It is located just between, just beside this Kutub Minar. Okay. So on this iron pillar, the inscription of Chandragupta two can be found. Okay. So you have to remember uh, this iron pillar inscription is about Chandragupta two, whereas Allahabad inscription is about Samudra Gupta. And this is the uh, Heliodorus pillar. Okay. It is located in Vidisha, Madhya Pradesh. Next, uh, C this following paragraph about which of the following art is being described here. It is an, see, again see the first statement, this is a indigenous school of sculpture. Okay, so we have different uh, schools of sculpture in India. Okay, during this uh, second century and you know third century AD. Go, we have Gandhara school, Madura school and Amravati school. Okay, so Gandhara and Madura, they had some West, western influences, but Amravati is completely indigenous. Okay, and it is very far away from that region also. So, Amravati school of art is present located in which region? In Andhra Pradesh only, okay. Uh, Krishna district, Gunto district, etc. Okay, that time it was called as Vengi. So, Vengi region. So, this region, okay. So, Bhatti Prolo, Amravati, Jagai Peta, Nagarjuna Konda. So, these are some of the important Buddhist sites, okay. 
So Amaravati School of Art, indigenous school of art. Again, another important feature of Amaravati School of Art is, so in Gandhara and Madhura School of Art, we find individual sculptures, okay, and panels, okay, like Buddha with some angels, you know, and you know, we have a series of disciples and different kind of animals which are present. But in Amaravati School of Art, we do not, okay, there are many single images, but at the same time, it is a narrative art. That means, in a single rock, numerous different kinds of animals, you know, and uh, uh, different kinds of humans are present, which are narrating a story. Okay. Whereas in Madhura and Gandhara art, the story is not described properly. It is just about a sculpture of a certain um, uh, human. Whereas in Amravati school of art, okay, each sculpture, they tell a story. Okay. So about who are present, what is being happening. For example, King Coronation okay, or a Jataka tale, a deer is being hunted by a lion. Okay. So this, there is a huge narration which is happening. Okay. And <coughs> another important thing is, uh, yeah, structural anatomy and intricacy, okay, and the style is more elegant and sophisticated, okay. So, these are some of the important features of Amaravati School of Art. So, like if you can see here, it is very much elaborated with, there are so many details, okay. So, again, each of the animal and each of the symbol have their own meaning, okay, with reference to the Buddha's life. Next, with reference to prehistoric cave paintings in India. See the first statement in India, the earliest painting have been reported from the upper Paleolithic period. Okay. So again for your reference, I have put here. So the early uh, history, early ancient Indian history can be divided into different uh, stages. Okay. So Paleolithic, Middle Paleolithic, Upper Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Charcoalithic, next Harappan okay. and then from again everything starts. Okay. So in India, the earliest paintings, cave paintings can be found from upper paleolithic only okay so be previously before to that nothing can be found no cave paintings have been found okay so in india the earliest evidences of cave paintings can be found from upper paleolithic period that is 35000 years ago okay again so the cave paintings are in the form of some uh, what is the major theme hunting okay food gathering okay just you know some animals and group of uh, sheep or buffaloes or oxen you know hunting so these are some of the important themes Next, the first discovery of rock painting in India is made by archaeologist V. S. Vakankar. This is false because who is V. S. Vakankar? What did he discover? V. S. Vakankar. Have you heard his name? This is there in NCRT. In NCRT, Art and Culture book, what is that? In introduction to Indian Art. Okay, Bimbetka. So, V. S. Vakankar is the archaeologist who discovered Bimbetka caves and we know the Bimbetka culture. Okay. So, the first discovery of rock paintings in India was not made by V.S. Vakankar, but again it is made by <laughs> Archibald Carriel. Okay. So, he is an uh, English archaeologist. So, this is also there in NCRT only. Next, Bimbetka cave paint uh, contain paintings from Paleolithic, Mesolithic and Chalcolithic period. This is correct. Okay. So in Bimbetka caves, multiple generations of painting can be found. In fact, their paintings they have been uh, made layer by layer. Okay. That means during the period of Paleolithic period, some people have drawn something. Okay. But again, after some years, that has been erased, and above that, one more painting has been made. Okay. Again, after some thousands of years, again those paintings have been erased, and again new layer of paintings have been made. Okay. Likewise, different multiple stages of paintings can be found in Bimbetka. Okay, next question is with reference to uh, different kind of pottery. Okay, so again, uh, as you know, as the culture and you know, the lifestyle of the people is changing. Okay, the uh, influence of the change in their lifestyle and the culture of the society can be inferred from the type of pottery which is present in that area. Okay, so as the sophistication of life is increasing, the pottery is getting more and more refined, and the you know the texture is changing. Okay, the different kind of patterns and you know images can be found on the pottery and the polish of the pottery is also getting detailed and it is getting fine refined okay so just by considering the type of pottery which is present in the region okay the uh, the, the respective age period can be uh, um, uh, demarcated okay so likewise we have different kinds of pottery cultures in india so which of the following are uh, correctly matched so in fact all of these are correctly matched 
black and red ware pottery it is found in late harappan it is characterized by subsistence farming okay whereas painted grey ware okay it is characterized with vedic period it is associated with emergence of villages okay and emergence of urban regions whereas northern black polished ware okay it is associated with later vedic period when you know mahajanapadas they were emerging okay so these are the examples so this is black and red ware okay this is painted grey ware this is northern black polished ware okay so as you know as you know the culture is advancing the pottery is also getting more and more refined okay so these are the areas where you know so this is so black and red ware has been found all across india okay but this is the harappan culture okay whereas this is painted grey ware not till here but till here okay till here it is painted grey ware it refers to vedic period okay whereas this is the northern black polished ware okay it refers to the later vedic period and the emergence of mahajanapadas okay so during this region we find you know many mahajanapadas okay so again most of the mahajanapadas are located in this northern uh, ganga uh, uh, plains only okay so here again asmaka avanti etc can be found very few in south india but again most of the mahajanapadas they are concentrated in this northern plains only ganga plains okay next uh, these are some of the important cave architecture art and architecture in the different caves okay so again if you see the whole ancient indian history we will find many different types of caves and you know different caves are associated with different kinds of arts okay in some caves sculptures can be found okay in some cases you know elaborate paintings can be found again all these sculptures and paintings they are associated with some kind of religion okay so again for example ellore caves okay in ellore caves there are a set of 35 caves okay so among all these 35 caves certain caves are related devoted for hinduism certain caves are devoted for buddhism certain caves are devoted for jainism etc likewise okay so you have to know in which caves which kind of religion is being propagated okay so sitanavasal caves where are sitanavasal caves tamil nadu okay so these are very earliest caves here this caves are devoted for jainism only so jaina monks they used to stay there and jaina sculptures and jaina related paintings can be found in sitanavasal caves okay whereas in badami caves okay they are devoted for both hinduism and jainism okay so evidences of buddhism have not been found much but hinduism and jainism can be found there in badami caves okay where are badami caves located karnataka karnataka okay ajanta caves okay ajanta caves again they are uh, uh, devoted only for buddhism only okay next ellore caves ellore caves we can find hinduism buddhism and jainism also okay so next question is with regarding to ajanta paintings so again the interesting feature of ajanta paintings is they are not devoted to a single time period or a single century so ajanta cave paintings they have been continuously existing for different kind of centuries okay from uh, second century bc to fifth century uh ad okay so their uh, their their time period is spanning for at least seven centuries okay so that means during the time of satavahanas and till the you know vakdaka kings and rashtrakutas the ajanta cave paintings have been in uh, active ex- active usage and existence okay so these form the these are the only surviving examples of paintings in india from the 1st century bc to 5th century ce okay this is a correct statement okay so in again in ajanta cave paintings so in the uh, second century and first century ce during the period of satavahanas some of the paintings have been made okay but again for two centuries the caves have been abandoned okay but again after you know during this vakdaka kings etc again during gupta period also some of the new paintings have been made okay so again so again they represent the um, uh, interest and you know the uh, this caves also represent the development of trade okay because these uh, cave paintings in ajanta have been patronized by different kind of guilds water guilds G- uh, association of merchants okay so there are different kinds of guilds for different kinds of commercial activities okay so based on the devotion of a guild towards a particular religion they are patronizing that means they are giving money for artists to use these caves for to develop certain kind of paintings okay so likewise in certain periods 
Okay, the cave paintings are active, whereas again there is a dormant phase. Okay, but again in third century to fifth century, these caves uh, paintings are in an active phase. Okay, so they represent some kind of commercial activity and you know the merchant activity, uh, um, etc. So this is correct statement, and these all statements are false because they are opposite to what is written here. These figures lack naturalism due to over stylization, which is wrong because the figures in, Amra, in uh, Ajanta paintings are very much natural. And they are not over stylized, they are very much in simple. Okay. And these paintings show remarkable uniformity. No, they do not show uniformity, but these paintings are very much diverse. What do they mean? That means these cave paintings have been patronized by guilds from different regions. Okay, not from a single region, but from North India, South India, West India. So, okay, so, so different kind of guilds they have patronized these paintings when some different styles have emerged. There is no uniform style. Okay, and the figures have different skin complexion. Okay, so if you can see, there are yellow, you know, blue, some uh, red, reddish color. Okay, so it does not mean the real uh, color of human beings, but they show the diversity of humans which are present okay, during that period. Okay, that means you know, diverse population. They have been patronizing this Ajanta cave paintings. Okay, and again, most of the cave paintings are related to Buddhism only. Okay, again, particularly Mahayana Buddhism. So again, these kind of questions the uh, UPSC has been asking very much frequently. Okay, they are not asking about any uh, during particular time period, but they are asking which kind of sculpture can be found in which kind of temple or which kind of you know place. Okay, so this you have to keep in mind. So the first one, Ravana shaking Mount Kailash. Okay, so again, all these images, you know, they are not asking from you know from very discrete sources, all of these images are in your NCRT only, that introduction to Indian art, in that book only, you know, different images are given. So, if you see this images itself, below the image, you know, they, they will write, okay, this image has been found in this kind of cave, etc., okay. So, this is the image, Ravana, this is Ravana, he is shaking the Mount Kailash, okay. So, this, so in uh, Ellora Caves, okay, three or four kinds of different interpretations of the same theme can be found in Ellora Cave, etc., okay. What is this? Trimurti Shiva, okay. So Shiva with three faces. This is found in Elephanta Caves, okay. So again, this is very famous uh, sculpture. It's a very huge sculpture, okay. This is found in Elephanta Caves. Next, what is this one? This is not Shore Temple. Descent of Ganges, okay. So it has been inferred as descent of Ganges because here you can find a man who is doing. Penance, okay. So he is standing on a single leg and he is doing penance. So it is inferred as Bhagiratha, okay. King Bhagiratha doing penance for the descent of the Ganga River, okay. So it has been inferred. It, where is it found? Mahabalpuram, okay. Descent of Ganges is found in Mahabalpuram. And this one, okay. This image can also be found in NCRT, okay. Varaha is who is lifting Lakshmi, Lakshmi or Bhudevi, okay. So this is this belongs to Gupta period. Okay, it is a part of Udaygiri cave. Okay, so see the following pairs: Ravana shaking Mount Kailash, Ajanta cave. Okay, I just just now I told you right. Ajanta caves they are devoted to Buddhism only. Okay, and mostly they are cave paintings and Buddhist stupas. Okay, but they do not have anything to do with Hinduism religion. So this is wrong. Descent of the Ganges is found in Mahabalpuram, not Kanchi. Okay, this is wrong. Next, huge Trimurti Shiva is found in Elephanta case, not Ellora case. Okay, Varaha lifting Budevi is found in Udaygiri cave, Vidisha. This is correct. Okay. So just see those images, these sculptures, and where they are present, in which temples they are present. Okay. Uh, now see the next question regarding ancient Indian universities. Okay. So we had numerous universities, Takshasila, Nalanda. And here somewhere you given Vallabhi, Odantapur, etc. Okay, and they have been patronized, they have been established by certain kings. Okay. So regarding Takshasila, we do not know who established exactly Takshasila, but it has been existing for a long time. Okay, Takshasila University is, uh, in, is uh, inferred to 5th century BC. Okay, in, it is said that Chandragupta Maurya, they have been studied, trained from Takshasila University. So according to Puranas, Takshasila University have been established by King Bharata, etc. Okay, but they do not have archaeological evidences. Hence, we do not know who established Takshila University. But let us see Nalanda University. Nalanda University is in Bihar. It is established during Gupta period, especially by King 
Kumar Gupta. Okay. So again, these you have to remember. Which king established what, which university? So Nalanda University was by Kumar Gupta. Next to Vallabhi in Gujarat, it was established by Bhattarka of Matrika dynasty. Okay. Next, Odantipura in Bihar. So after Gupta dynasty, we have Pala, Pala dynasty in Bengal Bihar region. Okay. This Bengal means not West Bengal but also Bangladesh, this whole region, this whole eastern India was under Palas. Okay. So who is the founder of Pala dynasty? Gopala. Okay. Gopala is the founder of Pala dynasty. So Gopala he founded Odantipura University in Bihar. Okay. So after Gopala came Dharmapala. So during the period of Dharmapala, then Alanda University is losing its shine. Okay. So the research activity in Nalanda University was declining. So for that, in order to compensate, Dharmapala he established two universities, <coughs> Vikramshila University and Somapura Mahavihara. Okay. So right now we are calling them as universities, but during that period they were referred as Mahaviharas. Okay. So what is the difference between Vihara and Chaitya? Chaitya is a prayer place okay whereas vihara is a resting place or you know place where monks stay okay but these viharas they have grown into huge size and thousands of monks are staying in such a place that you know the different kind of educational activity started to begin okay so eventually mahaviharas are nothing but vishwavidyalayas like you know universities okay so vikramshila and somapura mahavihara somapura is in bangladesh present bangladesh okay they have been established by dharmapala Next again, Jagadala University, it was in Bangladesh, it was established by Ramapala of the Pala dynasty again. Okay. So again, these universities, they saw a decline on their own. At the same time, okay, some of the universities have been destructed by invasion during, uh, so who is the, fam who, this guy, he destroyed three universities in India. This Muhammadin Bhaktiar Kilji. Okay. So Bhaktiar Kilji. Okay, he ransacked Nalanda University, Vikram Sila and Odantapura universities. Okay. So there are it was said that you know once they have begun to fire, they have been, you know, the, the fire has been staying alive for uh, for many years. Okay. So those many uh, number of books or, or you know that uh, Talapatras they have so uh, huge quantities of them have been put to fire. Again, chronological question. Okay, so this also you have to remember which came first and which came last. Okay, with respect to rock cut architecture, so all these different kind of examples are given here. They are related to rock cut architecture. Okay, so <laughs> here easily by elimination you can come at a certain answer here. If you find all these uh, Kailasa Temple, Ellora, Mahabalipuram, okay, Badami caves and Barabar caves. Okay. Barabar case, you can highlight Barabar case because they are associated with which king? Barabar case. Ashoka, because? Lomas Rishi case, yes, but Ashoka, he devoted this case for Ajivika sect. Okay. So they belong to 2nd century BC. Okay, Barabar case. So uh, this is Barabar case. Entrance for Barabar case. Okay. So it was uh, patterned. So these caves were uh, excavated during Ashoka period, and he devoted these caves for Ajivika sect. Okay. Next, this cave is Badami cave. Okay. So again, after uh, if we arrange this in chronological order, next we have Badami caves. So Badami caves they belong to roughly uh, sixth century, sixth century AD. Okay. Next we have Pancharatas of Mahabalpuram. Water Pancharatas, see these, these structures, okay. So Pancharatas, we do not, uh, they are called as Pancharatas because there are certain five small temples. It is said that they are devoted to Panch, Pancha Pandavas, okay. So each uh, uh, structure, they are, these are all monoliths. What do you mean by monolith? Single, single rock. rock. That means each of the structures they have been excavated from a single rock okay so pallavas they very much patternized this single rock structures okay like example in mahabalipuram so you already saw one panel from mahabalipuram right the descent of the ganges or arjuna's penance okay so that's a, that that also also <coughs> during the mahabalipuram only 
and this Panchalata guys, they were also during the uh, you know Pallava dynasty period only. So they belong to. So these they belong to seventh century. Next, Kailasa Temple at Ellora. Okay. So what is the significance of this temple? It is also a rock cut temple. So the construction of this temple has begun from the top. Okay. So so this is the temple. So in fact, previously this temple was it was not a temple, but it is a huge mountain structure. But from the top onwards, okay, the temple has been started to they had started to carve the temple from the top and they ended it in the bottom. Okay. So this was constructed from top to bottom. This is the Kailasa temple at Ellora. Okay. This was during period of which dynasty? Rashtrakutas. Rashtra who who constructed this temple? Krishna. Krishna one, okay. So this is during eighth century. So uh, I hope you know about uh, all these dynasties: Pallava dynasty, Rashtrakuta dynasty, Chalukyas, Pallava Chalukya conflict. I just told about one uh, Chalukya king. I hold inscription. It is about. Victory of Pulakesi two by our Harshavardhana. Okay, it was in a uh, eye hole inscription. Okay, likewise this this character Pulakesi two. So he defeated Harshavardhana. Okay. At the same time, he also defeated. So all these are contemporaries. So he belongs to Chalukya dynasty. And this is Harshvardhana. And next also we have Pallava king. Who is the Pallava king then? Mahendra Varman. So Pulakesi too also defeated Mahendra Varman. Okay. Now in order to avenge the you no know, defeat of Mahendra Varman Bole Pulakesi, son of Mahendra Varman came. Who is he? Narasimha Varman. Okay. So Narasimha Varman again defeated Pulakesi II. Okay. So again it did not start there also. So again after Pulakesi II again we have Vikramaditya. So his father got defeated Pulakesi II again. So again Vikramaditya in order to avenge. Okay, he again defeated Narasimha Varma II. Okay, so this is brief about Pallava Chalukya conflict. Okay, so again uh, why I am the reason I am telling about Pallava Chalukya conflict is it how it led to the Indian temple architecture. Okay, because. So if you see this temple here, this is a Kailasana temple at Kanchi. Okay. So this is Kailasana temple at Kanchipuram. Okay. So this temple has a connection with this temple also because, so if you see here when Polakesi II defeated Mahendra Orman. Okay. So what happened? Chalukya they got victory over Pallavas. So during Pallava kingdom, they found this temple attractive. So these Chalukyas, they hired the workers from this temple, and they took these workers to Chalukya kingdom, Badami. Okay. So these Chalukya people, they have hired the Pallava workers, and they told them to construct a similar temple in their Badami also. Okay. So again, so in Badami, they constructed this temple. What is Virupaksha temple? Okay. This is at Patadakal, near Badami. Okay, so again in later period we see that Chalukyas they were defeated by Rashtrakutas again. Okay, so the Krishna one. So this Krishna one defeated Vikramaditya again. Okay, so when Krishna one defeated Vikramaditya again, he hired the same workers of the you know this uh, temple who who built this temple. So again he hired the same workers to construct a similar temple at Ellora also. Okay. So these people, they are already having a blue blueprint. Okay, in what to construct, where to construct, etc. In what format? Okay. So these workers again, they went there 
and they started to dig this temple from top to bottom okay so in fact that is why all these three temples they have a similar uh, they have a similar uh, iconography and similar style okay in fact but they belong to three different dynasties okay this is with regard into pallavas okay this is the chalukyas and this is rashtrakutas okay again about uh, questions about indian ar in temple architecture so we have three uh, types of uh, temple architecture broadly what are they nagara dravida and vasara okay so i hope you know all of this so this is nagara temple these are dravida temples so in nagara temple this is called from here to here this part is called as shikara okay whereas in dravida temples this part this part is called as shikara have you understood the difference okay in nagara temples north indian temples from here to here this whole tower is called as shikara whereas in south indian temple this up capstone untund kada that alone is called as shikara whereas this structure is called as what is this called vimana, vimana. okay this is called as vimana this is shikara whereas here this is shikara but here above this shikara we find a disk it is called as almaka okay and above that we find a kalasha okay but what is gopuram in south indian temples entrance. entrance gateway okay so before entering the temple here we find a gateway and here there is a huge tower that is called as gopuram okay so here all these statement all these three statements are incorrect okay because they have been interchanged so this is what is this temple name kajraho temple okay kandriya mahadeva temple okay this is burudeshwar temple so this is called as gopuram okay whereas these are all mandapas and this is the vimanam and this is called as shikara okay now again uh, this is from ncert only based on the circumambulatory path or pradakshana patha we have different kind of temples we have sandara means the temples which are having pradakshana patha nirandara means those temples which do not have pradakshana patha whereas sarvatobhadra means these temples they can be accessed from all the sides so these are examples so this is nirandara temple okay if you can see here they do not have any space for revolving around the temple okay so this is nirandara temple whereas here there is space here pillared there is a pillared path okay to rotate around the temple okay so this is sandara temple whereas this is sarvatobhadra so this temple can be accessed from all the directions through this way this way or this way okay which of the following statements is incorrect regarding nagara temple <coughs> these temples follow panchayatana style or crucified ground plan yes if you see here this is called as panchayatana style okay so that means addition to the main temple there are subsidiary temples also okay so all of these make five temples and they have a crucified ground plan okay in the same of a uh, plus shape okay so latina famsana and vallabhi are its three sub styles based on the type of shikara again uh, uh, these images can be found in ncert so this is the latina temple <coughs> okay so it has a uh, uh, arching tower and it uh, coincides at a top whereas this one it has a pyramidal structure okay it is like a multiple slabs which are raised one above the other okay so this is called as famsana this is latina whereas this is vallabhi type of temples okay it have this have this kind of structure like a hut okay again see this statement pancharata satrata and navarata are these three sub styles based on its ground plan okay if you see here based on how many sites this temple uh, shikara has okay so they can be classified into pancharata navarata or saptarata okay if you see this this is the main gopuram so but with elaboration with time okay this example in kajuraha temples we can see that along with this main gopuram we also have a smaller gopuram on all its sides this side this side this side also okay but even for this smaller uh, shikara here 
they are having its own again subsidiary shikaras again on this all the three sides okay again for this one we find you know different uh, shikaras smaller shikaras okay so likewise the temples they started to get elaborated and you know they get to get very much decorative so kajuraho temples okay they form the peak stage of uh, nagara temple architecture so what is the false statement here these temples generally have elaborate boundary walls with gateways okay so this feature is a feature of dravida style okay because nagara temples they do not have boundary walls okay whereas south indian dravida temples they have a huge boundary walls with a gopuram okay so again again these are uh, related to uh, the <laughs> sub schools of nagara style of architecture okay so nagara style is in north india so basically they have a geographical distribution also so nagara type of temples can be found above the ranges of vindhya okay and uh, that means above the narmada river okay so between Na narmada river and krishna river okay the temples are called as vesra temples okay between this uh, uh, krishna river and uh, what is this kaveri river it is dravida temples okay so again this nagara temples they can be divided into odisha school kajuraho school and solanki school okay so these statements are these two statements are wrong because the theme of kajuraho schools are erotic in nature okay whereas solanki school they are also called as maru gurjara style okay in odisha school mandapa and shikara they are known as jagmohan and dwar respectively okay that is also correct because this is odisha school temple okay so they resemble uh, uh, the best example of odisha school of temple is lingaraj temple in bhubaneswar okay so even the sun temple at konark what we see right now in sun temple konark is only this part this part okay so this is called as jagmohan whereas the main uh, tower of this temple has been collapsed okay so this is called as dual devil okay so this is so this is the original uh, plan of sun temple at konark whereas all these structures they have been collapsed and only this part has been left okay so what we are seeing right now is just a part of a mandapa which of the following statements regarding to vijayanagara school of architecture correct so use of domes walls and arches in the buildings is this correct statement this is correct statement because vijayanagara period is in which century 14th. yeah the 14th through 17th century okay but during this period we have indo islamic influence also okay so the influence of islamic architecture can be found in vijayanagara school okay hence all these domes walls and arches can be found in vijayanagara architecture like these are the examples so here we have a dome kind of structure and here we have temple structure whereas here see if you see here they have arches okay like this arches which can be found in uh, forts in north india agra fort etc this kind of arches can also be found here okay so they have indo islamic style of influence in vijayanagara school of architecture next they introduced pravida style with a large number of pillars this is also correct because pravida style means you know like in vijayanagara period along with the temple and uh, gopuram they also started to construct different pillared halls okay like kalyana mandapa ranga mandapa like there are many so many different types of ha pillared halls for different purposes for temple activities so okay along with the temple and religious architecture they also constructed secular buildings okay secular buildings like market places okay like if you see in hampi beside virupaksha temple okay we have uh, 500 meters long highway uh, on the both sides of the road we have huge corridors they are market corridors okay so these can be accessed by any any people okay they are not for religious activity but for secular activities okay for day to day uh, daily practices also okay so secular buildings concept was also introduced during vijayanagara period so this is with regard into unesco world heritage site okay so we have different world heritage sites so if you see them we have a category called group of uh, great living chola temples okay so in fact these are a group of three temples so brudeshwara temple at tanjore this was constructed by rajaraj chola. chola whereas gangaikonda cholapan was constructed by his son rajendra chola okay 
Ayravathesar temple, it was constructed by later times uh, uh, by some uh, Chola king only. Okay. So all these three temples, Burudishwara temple, Gangai Konda Cholapuram and Ayravathesar temple, these are these form part of great living Chola temples because it is there in the name itself, they are still living, they are still functioning. That means in these temples, pilgrims are still visiting and you know daily that uh, puja and aradhana in these temples is still going on. Okay? That is these have been existing since thousand of years. Okay? Whereas this Kailasana temple is part of Pallava dynasty, I told you right, Mahendra Varman group. Let's consider the following statement with reference to Pala and Sena school of architecture. So this again Pala dynasty, Sena dynasty, okay, they functioned in this eastern India region, okay, Bengal, Bihar, Odisha region etc. Okay, so again, uh, so during this Pala Sena school of architecture, they have very much local influence in their buildings. So buildings had a curved or sloping roofs, okay, like the kind of roofs which can be found in a like Tati Chetlu Pethi Untan Gada, that like similar kind of architecture can be found in the temples also, like in the form of a hut. Okay, so these kind of uh, temples and structures they are associated with Pala Sena school of architecture. So if you see here. Okay, the principal ingredient is here not just stone but also bricks. Okay, and the sculptures here they are made of terracotta. What is terracotta? Clay. clay. Okay, baked clay. Okay, so terracotta sculptures can be found in this uh, school of temples. Next, the sculptures use both stone and metal, etc. And the terracotta bricks are principal building material. Okay, so all these statements are correct. Okay, next with reference to Vesara school of architecture. So Vesara is a hybrid style of Nagara and Dravida style. So this is this is Nagara style, this is Dravida style, whereas this is Vesara style. So here if you see here, they have a tower similar to the Nagara style tower, but on this above this tower they have a Shikram, the South Indian temple of Shikram under the round. So even that can be found here. Okay. And not this is just one example. But again, the motifs of uh, both the South Indian and North Indian temples can be found in the Vesra architecture. Okay? So it is a hybridized version of both this school of architecture. This style was patronized by Nayakas and Pallavas. This is wrong because both Pallavas and Nayakas, they patronized Dravidian school of architecture. Whereas Vesra school was established by whom? Chalukyas, Inka. Rashtrakutas still, Rashtrakutas and Hoyasalas. Okay, so this is important here. Vesara school of architecture was patronized by primarily by Chalukyas. Okay, all the temples in Badami, Aihol, Patadikal, etc., they are of Vesara type. Next, Rashtrakutas and Hoyasalas. Okay, all the different Hoyasala school of temple architecture, they are also form a part of Vesara school. So the patriarchal group of temples in Badami region, okay, they are also part of Vesara school only. So this temple, uh, see the next question, this temple has a star shaped stellate plan. Okay. So just by viewing this statement, Hoyasala's temple should get into your mind okay, because if you see Hoyasala temples, the ground plan of Hoyasala, Hoyasala temple, it has a star shaped plan okay if you see in this manner here okay the ground is uh, the ground is made of a different uh, angular uh, joints okay it is kind of a, like a star okay so in this manner the ground uh, plan of the temples can be found okay so this is the specific feature of hoyasala temples only okay so if you know this then based on this answer you can put the answer so Virupaksha temple in Hampi, they, are, they, they do not belong to Hoyasala. Kajuraha also do not belong to Hoyasala. And in Bhuvaneshwar also we do not have Hoyasala temples. Okay? So Hoyatala, Hoyasala temples can be found in uh, these areas, Belur, Halebedu, etc. and Somrathpura, etc. So in these regions and in Western Karnataka region, mostly Hoyasala temples can be found. Okay? So this Chandikeshwara temple in Belur is the best example for this Hoyasala temples. Okay, along with that, these temples also have a exquisite, uh, intricate and carvings. Okay, again because they made use of soapstone. If it is sandstone or granite, then it is difficult to carve details. But they are using here 
soft soap stone okay so because of this reason it is possible to cover minute details okay so even in the structures different kind of holes etc can be found okay okay with reference to tamil tirukkural okay it deals with ethics and way of life of the tamil people so sangam age okay so it is a straight forward question which of the following statements regarding carnatic music is incorrect so see here uh, first you have to know about carnatic trinity okay so these three are the major uh, proponents of carnatic music or carnatic music was already in existence but these three have contributed to a generation of different kinds of ragas okay so the carnatic trinity means tyagaraja muddu swami and shama shastri okay so these three represent carnatic trinity purandradasa is considered as the father of carnatic music this is also correct and annamacharya was the earliest composer of kirtanas okay whatever we call as annamaya kirtanas he was the earliest composer okay in fact annamaya and purandradasa okay both are, are uh, contemporaries okay both lived during same period okay in fact annamaya is is born earlier than purandradasa okay but annamaya came into light at a later stage okay only when in tirumala temple okay few many of the um, talapatra that copper plates they have been found very at later stage okay then only annamaya came into existence Be before that people did not know the existence of annamaya he has faded into history next this tyagaraja aradhana so tyagaraja aradhana is conducted every year okay so during this tyagaraja it is a birth festival of tyagaraja okay tyagaraja aradhana is held in tiruvayur okay so tiruvayur is the birthplace of tyagaraja okay so tyagaraja is a devotee of this question they asked last year tyagaraja is a devotee of krishna they asked but no tyagaraja is a huge devotee of rama okay so all the poems composed by tyagaraja are admiration towards rama only okay so tyagaraja is born in tiruvayur but every year uh, tyagaraja aradhana festival is held there chapan ma'am tanjore district but i asked uh, every year in tanjore so but in that exact location if you know you can put that i could have given chennai but mari custom ayipodani okay with reference to the calendar forms of india okay so in india we follow gregorian calendar which is global calendar which we follow for day to day activities okay along with that we also have two other uh, indigenous or you know ancient calendars okay we have vikram is a uh, vikram samvat and saka samvat okay so here the vikram samvat was established by king vikramaditya of ujjain in 56 bc okay so this is the incorrect thing here okay it was established in 56 bc whereas saka samvat was initiated by king salivahana in 78 ad this is correct statement okay but here we did not adopt vikram samvat but we adopted saka samvat okay indian government has adopted this saka year as its uh, national calendar okay so in uh, all the government gazettes so along with the gregorian calendar the saka year is also mentioned which uh, masam which chaitra masam or you know what is the tidhi etc so he, this you should not confuse so 56 bc and 78 ad okay vikram samvat is 56 bc saka is samvat is 78 ad okay and uh, we have adopted the saka samvat not vikram samvat okay ha ah, it is said kanishka also there are different uh, controversy not controversy uh, according to different beliefs it was adopted by different people ఆ అలా కూడా అంటారు గౌతమ్ బుద్ధ సాతకాన్ని కూడా స్టార్ట్ చేశారు అంటారు దేర్ ఇస్ నో పర్టికులర్ ఈవెంట్ విచ్ ఇస్ మార్కింగ్ హూ ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ దిస్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ విక్రమ్ సంవత్ ఓకే ఇట్ వాస్ ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ బై కింగ్ విక్రమాదిత్య ఆఫ్ ఉజ్జయిన్ దేర్ ఇస్ నో ఎవిడెన్స్ ఫర్ విక్రమాదిత్య ఆఫ్ ఉజ్జయిన్ ఓకే ఇట్ ఇస్ సెట్ దట్ డ్యూరింగ్ దట్ టైమ్ సమ్ లోకల్ కింగ్ మైట్ హ్యావ్ బిన్ లివ్డ్ అండ్ హీ టు అజ్యూమ్ ద టైటిల్ ఆఫ్ విక్రమాదిత్య మైథలాజికల్ విక్రమాదిత్య ఓకే విక్రమాదిత్య మైథలాజికల్ స్టోరీ రైట్ విక్రమ అండ్ బేతాల్ ఓకే దట్ ఇస్ అ మైథలాజికల్ స్టోరీ వి డూ నాట్ హ్యావ్ ద ఎవిడెన్స్ ఫర్ the real vikramaditya of ujjain okay who received that uh, golden throne etc okay so these are just some stories on uh, based on a popular belief so like we saka samvat some say you know uh, kanishka started saka samvat after you know uh, he go, uh, get, uh, attained victory over rashtrakutas okay some say satvahanas have uh, started this uh, saka samvat after gaining victory over sakas okay but we do not know what is correct okay we have to follow popular belief only okay 
this dance form is known for its grace sensuality and beauty okay the dancers create intricate uh, geometrical shapes and patterns with body it is also known as mobile sculpture so all this point towards odyssey okay so odyssey dance is known for its grace and sensuality okay so it is not it is most not uh, it is devotional at the same time it is also sensual odyssey dance next shabdam varnam and padam these are popular elements of bharatanatyam puppetry okay we have uh, different kinds of puppetry like string puppetry string puppetry means the hands and legs are attached with strings and they are uh, uh, no they are uh, moved according to the uh, pose next we have shadow puppetry this is uh, glow puppetry means it is like a, the puppet is like a glow we put our hand inside it and we you know we talk this is rod puppetry okay this rod is moved for you know movement okay so likewise uh, we have different kinds of string puppetry also okay kathputli where is this found kathputli in rajasthan kunde kunde ha huh? odisha gombayatta karnataka kathputli rajasthan kunde hi odisha gombayatta karnataka bommalatta bommalattam tamil nadu tol bommalatta is in andhra ravanchaya is in odisha togal gombayatta karnataka pavakootu kerala yampuri bihar putulnach no putulnach assam bengal northern odisha all this eastern india okay bengal and assam so these uh, you have to remember anyway so uh, these all are you know very much uh, static they need they may ask any random question so we have in nitin singhania book these are list is given okay we have different forms of uh, puppetry we have different forms of theater practices okay different martial arts practices are there so all this list you have to just go through before exam if they ask it is it is uh, you know a direct question for you again uh, folk theaters uh, plays okay which of the following statements incorrect ankia nat is traditional one act play of assam this is correct raman okay raman is in intangible cultural uh, heritage of india okay we also have along with world heritage sites we also have a list of unesco intangible heritage okay so in that raman is also present next theyam is an open air theater of kerala okay it is all similar to bhootakola you know this kantara movie etc okay it's, it is similar next bayalata is an open air theater of karnataka okay bayalata is not from andhra pradesh okay so you know doubts on aya so this is how you should uh, prepare what you know the areas which you should focus okay you are, so i try to mention many pillar inscriptions but still there are many inscriptions okay so all these inscriptions you have to make a list for uh, make if you once make a notes then it will be with you for your whole preparation journey so as you keep on getting uh, hearing about new kinds of uh, inscriptions keep on adding them okay so uh, here which main inscriptions i have mentioned here alhabad inscription alhabad inscription is composed by composed by harisena okay i hall inscription composed by king okade kaadu adu evaru rasaru aa sanskrit evaru rasanu kuda untadi ravikriti okay likewise so these are the focus areas okay how you should approach your preparation for art and culture okay because for art and culture it is interesting also chaala interesting unda chavutunna appudu okay so prepare as if uh, don't take pressure and prepare properly again we don't know how many questions they will ask it is very dicey also even if you prepare too much it is more than you uh, know instead of preparing art and culture you could have prepared for some other topic okay so best approach is instead of approaching any certain kind because all these things are not available in a single source it is better to follow, practice more practice questions because new things can be we, you know we can learn from practice questions only okay otherwise you know for the art and culture preparation nitin singhania and uh, inter introduction to indian art okay ncert untadi introduction to india that is more than enough okay
See, because while preparing for art and culture, we don't know what to prepare exactly because along with ancient India, medieval India, along with the kings, their dynasties, their chronology, along with that political aspect of the kingdom, you also have to remember the cultural aspects also. Okay, But in this exam, I have not asked yet about the administration part. If administration party that is again different level. Okay, these days they are not. I don't know from which uh, you know inscriptions they are asking. What is that unit of administration called? Alanta ani chala onte. Inga medieval India le thalanta inga onte. Mughal Empire lo wal name onta ro, wheel name onta ro, officers name onta ro alanta ani. Okay, unit of administration onta ala onta ani. Okay, it's better to make a list. For example, Gupta Empire lo ante proper ka prepare just konde. Theme wise alanta ani. Don't go chronology wise, but go according to theme. Okay. So, rock cut architecture. Now, in India, the rock cut architecture is starting to start. The rock cut architecture in India. What is the earliest rock cut cave architecture in India? Barabar case. Japan, right? Barabar case. Okay, this. Okay. Earliest painting, cave paintings, and what is it? Bimbeth cave paintings. Again, if you have to arrange this Ajanta period, what is it? What is it? Second or first BC to fifth century AD. Okay, now Ellora means so Ellora paintings are continuation of Ajanta. Okay, Ajanta are, uh, Ajanta is up to fifth century. Ellora is from sixth century to eleventh century. Okay. Next we are in South India also we have different like in South India this cave architecture was uh, started by Pallavas. Okay, Pallavas especially Mamalla Mahabalapuram under Mahabalapuram is a Mamalla city. Mamalla is who is Mamalla? Narasimha Varma one. Okay. So all that uh, Arjuna's finance, okay, it was started by him. Arjuna's finance and the, uh, all these five pancharatas, etc. They were built by Narasimha Varma one. Whereas in Mahabalipuram we also have Shore Temple. Shore Temple undi kada? Guttunda? Shore Temple. Shore Temple was built by Narasimha Varma two. Narasimha Varma two. Okay. Okay, so ne your next art and culture will be on uh, medieval India. So you know where to focus in, in the architecture area. Okay, again, you also have to focus on inscription part. So you have seen here one about one inscription. What is that? Allahabad inscription. Okay, so Ashokan inscription they were further uh, Mughal kings. Okay, they have edited those inscriptions. Likewise, we have another inscription also during medieval India. What is that? Which king? Firosha Tugla. Firosha Tugla, he brought two inscriptions to Delhi, two Ashokan inscriptions. Okay, one from Meerut, one from Haryana. He brought two inscriptions and he placed them in Delhi. He tried to disper also, but uh, he didn't succeed. Okay, but later, but later, who dispersed Ashokan inscriptions? James? James Prince. He dispersed Ashokan inscriptions. Okay. 